Let's talk about frames and machines. We see them all over the place and use them to make our lives easier. Frames support loads and machines have moving parts that transmit forces or change the effect of a force. So for example, pliers, where a small force applied at the handles create a much larger force at the jaws. Usually, frames and machines are structures which contain pin-connected members. So in this object, these are the pins and these are the members. We can figure out the forces in the pins and we can figure out the forces in the members. Most of the time, it is best to first think of this as a whole and figure out the reactions of the supports. When we do that, we only consider external forces being applied. These include support reactions and forces applied manually. After that, we can separate all the members. At each pin, there will be two supports, one in the x direction and one in the y direction. These are the forces affecting the pin. The directions of these forces can be assumed. However, there is something you should keep in mind. Let's say, in this member, we drew our x and y reactions at the pin facing down and to the left. On the other member, at the exact same location, the forces must be opposite to our assumption in the first member. The magnitude is the same, but the direction flips. So now, the x reaction faces right and y reaction faces up. After that, you can write equations of equilibrium or moment equations for each individual member and solve for unknowns. One thing that will make finding these forces much easier is figuring out two force members. In a two force member, it only has forces applied at only two points. The forces must be equal in magnitude but opposite in directions. Lastly, they must have the same line of action directed along the line joining the two points where these forces act. When we see a member with just two forces applied, it makes the math very simple. For example, in the usual case, we will break the force into x and y components at each end, leaving us with four unknowns. However, by realizing a member is a two-force member, we don't need to break it into components and we will only have a single unknown, since the force at the other end would be facing the opposite direction but will have the same magnitude. All of this will become clear with a few examples. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's take a look at this problem where we need to figure out the reactions pin C exerts on member ABC. To solve this problem, we can either focus on member ADC and DBF or ABC and DBF. I'm going to use members ABC and DBF to solve this problem, which means I don't need to figure out the X and Y reactions at support E. But we will have to figure out the support reaction at A since that's applied to member ABC. We can do that by thinking of this whole frame as a single object without breaking it into pieces. Note that the 600 Newton force is applied to the pin, which means it's not an internal force. At support E, we would have two reactions, one in the x direction and another in the y direction. At A, which is a roller, we'd have a single reaction in the x direction. If we write a moment equation about point E, we can eliminate those reactions and figure out the force at A. Now we will draw the two members we will focus on separately. First, member DBF. At pin D, we'd have two reactions. At B, it will be the same. We also have the 300 Newton force applied at point F, and you can assume the directions for these reactions. Next, we draw member ABC. At A, we have the force we figured out in the previous step. At B, we would have the opposite reactions to our first diagram. So notice in the diagram for member DBF, we have BX facing right, so in this diagram, we will have it facing left. The same for BY. We have it facing up, which means here, it'll be facing down. It's always opposite. At pin C, we would have two reactions. However, we do not include the 600 Newton force. To understand why, let me draw just the pin and show the forces being applied to it. Here, this is the effect of member ABC on the pin, and this is the effect of member EDC on the pin. Notice how the 600 Newton force is now an internal force applied to the pin. When we draw each member separately, we are now considering CX and CY as external forces, and we do not include forces applied to a pin. However, note that when we thought of the whole body as a single object, then we do not care about CX or CY since those were considered internal forces, while the 600 Newton force applied to the pin is an external force. Now let's focus on the member DBF. We can figure out BX if we write a moment equation about point D. 
that eliminates forces dy and dx along with by since its line of action goes through point D. Let's solve. We don't need to figure out by and I will show you why. Let's take a look at member ABC. We can figure out CX by writing an equation of equilibrium for the x-axis forces. We only have three forces. Let's solve. Now if we write a moment equation about point B, notice how it eliminates the x and y reaction at pin B. That means we don't need to find BY to figure out CY. In fact, you can see that there is only one force that would create a moment about pin B, which is force CY, which means it has to be zero for this member to be in equilibrium. And those are our answers. Let's take a look at this problem, where we have to find the horizontal and vertical components of the forces at pins B and C. Usually, it's good to figure out the reactions at the supports as a first step. However, what we're looking for are the reactions at pins B and C. Notice that they're both part of member CB. So let's just focus on that member and draw a free body diagram. At pin C, we would have two reactions, one in the X direction and one in the Y direction. The directions are assumed. Now you should notice that member AB is a two force member. That means the resultant force at B would be like this. The angle can be found by using the inverse of tan. We also have the pulley attached, but we don't really care about the reactions at the pin of the pulley. What we care about is the tension in the cable. That tension is the same throughout the cable, and that's equal to the weight of the cylinder multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. Now let's mark down the distances needed for our calculations. Notice how we have three unknowns, the two reactions at C and force AB. We can directly solve for force AB if we write a moment equation about point C that eliminates the reaction at C. Note that only the Y component of force AB creates a moment since the X component's line of action goes through point C. So we have the Y component times the perpendicular distance, then we have the force applied at the pulley at the top, and lastly, the force applied at the pulley on the bottom. Don't forget to add the radius of the pulley for the perpendicular distance. Also keep in mind that since we pick clockwise to be positive, the weight of the cylinder creates a positive moment about point C, while the other forces create counterclockwise moments, meaning they're negative. Let's solve. Now, we have two unknowns left. To find the y-axis force, we can write an equation of equilibrium for the y-axis forces. So we have the y component of force AB, the force pulling straight down at the pulley, and the reaction CY. Let's solve. To find the x-reaction, we can do the same, but with an equation of equilibrium for the x-axis forces. We have the x-component of force AB, the x-axis force at the pulley, and reaction CX. Let's solve. Now since the question is asking for the x and y components of the reaction at B, we need to break force AB into components. We can do that by using the angle we found. And those are our answers. Let's take a look at this problem where we need to find the reactions at the supports. Usually, it's good to figure out the supports before thinking about individual pieces. However, this is not the case here. There are three supports, which means it would be difficult and we'd have to solve many equations simultaneously to get an answer. Let's think about just member DC and draw it separately. At D, we would have two reactions, DX and DY. At C, we would have one force straight upwards since it's a roller. Now we can easily figure out CY by writing a single moment equation about point D that eliminates DX and DY. Note that only the Y component of the 7 kN force creates a moment about point D. Now we can figure out DY by writing an equation of equilibrium for the Y axis forces. Let's solve. To figure out DX, we can write an equation of equilibrium for the X axis forces. Let's solve. Now we figured out the reactions for member DC. Let's move on to member ABD. At A, we have a roller, which means we would have a single force upwards. At B, we have a pin support, so we will have X and Y components. At D, we have the values we found, but note that our reactions are facing opposite to the direction we chose from our other diagram. We also have the forces that are applied to member ABD. Now let's start with a moment equation about pin B. This eliminates BX and BY along with DX since its line of action goes through point B. Let's solve. To figure out BX, all we need is an equation of equilibrium for the x-axis forces. The only other force excluding BX is just the x-reaction at D. Let's solve. 
Lastly, to find by, we just need an equation of equilibrium for y-axis forces. Let's solve. And those are our answers. Let's take a look at one last example. In this question, we need to figure out the angle theta for this object to stay in equilibrium. Before we take apart the members, it's good to figure out the force in this spring. To do that, we can use Hooke's law. We already know the stiffness of the spring, but we don't have the length of extension. So that's what we need to find. Notice how we can draw a right angle triangle like this. Using sine, we can represent half of the length of the spring. That means the full length of the spring is two times that. Originally, the spring has an unstretched length of 0.3 meters. So to find how much it extended, we need to subtract this amount. This gives us the extension. Now we can plug this back into our force equation and simplify. Next, we will analyze each member separately. First, let's take a look at member CB. At C, we would have two reactions since it's a pin support. We also have the force of the spring downwards. In the question, we're told that each member has a mass of 20 kilograms. We can show the weight of the bar at the center. That's mass times the acceleration due to gravity. And lastly, at B, we would have two reactions. Now we need the distances. To do so, let's draw a right angle triangle like this. This angle would be the same since these are alternate interior angles. That means the side opposite to our angle is 2 sine theta and the adjacent length is 2 cos theta. Since the weight is at the center, each piece would be cosine theta. Now there isn't a way to write a moment equation to eliminate enough unknowns for a direct solution. So let's move on to the other member. Starting at B, we have the same reactions as before but in the opposite directions. At A, we would have a support force at the roller in the x direction, and the spring force is pulling upwards. Let's not forget the weight of this member as well. The distances are the same as before. We can now start with the moment equation about point C using member CB. This eliminates the reaction at C along with the force of the spring. Now if we write a moment equation about point A on the other member, we can eliminate the reaction there and have another equation with just the forces at B. We now have two equations with three unknowns, so we need one more equation. For that, let's write an equation of equilibrium for the y-axis forces using member AB. We don't want to use member CB since we'd have to consider the reactions as C and we will end up with more unknowns. Now we have three equations with three unknowns. You can solve them any way you like. We get an angle of 23.7 degrees, which is our answer. You may have noticed that we got a negative value for BX which means our assumption for its direction is wrong. It faces the other way. That should cover how to solve frames and machines problems. By thinking of the object as a whole and then isolating for individual members, you can figure out a multitude of reactions and forces both internal and external. I hope this video helped and thanks for watching. Best of luck with your studies.